So, slides are up. Oh, oh, and, and the key is why you guys have brought your computers, or at least five of you have, is there is a chance to win cash and prizes at the end of this event, or I should say a prize. So, we will have a contest to so come up with the best title slide at the end of it. All of you guys will be voting, and whoever has the best title slide at the end of it gets a $25 gift certificate to the um, shop here. So, there was a reason to bring your computer. So, <clears throat> ah, without any further hassle, what's wrong with this slide? Presentation spelled wrong. Fabulous, wonderful. All right, there's one. One thing wrong, all right. Now you're only missing two more major things. You didn't Not capitalize all those words. <clears throat> title. Doesn't have to be. That's kind of a personal thing. There's no reason it has to be title case, but some people like it, some don't. But if I would have done capital, 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 that would have been an issue, right? Be consistent in your use of capital case if you decide to do that, as opposed. But using sentence case is just fine. No picture. No, I mean, a no picture, that's actually <coughs> a good one. I think everything should always have a picture on it because it actually brings up, brings something of interest on there. It gets people's attention. I would say it's boring. <laughs> it's boring. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was pretty. I thought it was nice. Well, okay, it might be boring, but I might be a boring person. You don't know that, so that might be exciting to me. But I agree, there should be something a little bit more to it. Um, anything else? Like credentials, like where you went to school. Fabulous, <clears throat> wonderful. So you're at a seminar or at a conference. You're giving a talk. You have this up there. Nobody's ever going to know how to contact you, right? Mm -hmm. So you always want to have that. And so there's one more. Anybody? How to not give a presentation. It could be oh, how not, not to, to give a presentation. Yes, right. It is a, this is the big hint. They may be too young for this. I don't know. Star Trek. Star Trek. How, okay, thank you. This was the, in case they were old, in case that was too long. So what's wrong with that? It's a to not give. It's a split. Infinitive. Thank you! The most famous one being to boldly go from Star Trek, right? Please, none of you guys have seen any of the Star Trek movies, series, anything? I've heard of this. That. This is recent! I've, I've seen, seen it. I don't know <clears throat> to boldly go. To boldly go where no originally man has gone before, but then they switched it to no one has gone before. Oh, it's a, it's a sad, sad thing. Okay, <laughs> so there was a problem. Okay, here we go. So, what do you do? First couple of slides, what do you always want to have? Okay, sure, maybe we want to try and give it so that people has, <coughs> have an idea of what we're going to be talking about. Tell me, how many guests have ever written a paper before? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this actually means I did something, okay? So we will do this for full, this is a dictatorial democracy. You guys get to vote and answer questions, but you must vote one way or the other. So... Tell me, what part does every paper always have, sir? Can you name me one part that any science paper always has? Uh, synopsis of some sort, maybe, or summary. An abstract? Okay, sure. Name me another part that is always found in every single science paper. Data. Mm, kind of. Where would you find the data? Because you'd never really put raw data in a science paper. The table. Then... And what's that part of? The answer's up there. <laughs> Results! Fabulous! Give me another thing that's always in a paper. There is always an introduction in the paper. One more thing that's always in a paper. Discussion. Discussion! <laughs> Wonderful! And last thing, what is always in a paper? One more thing? Methods. So, basically, if you put this up here, have you told anybody anything different? No. Everybody knows your talk is going to have an introduction. It's going to have a method. It's going to have a results. And it's going to have a discussion section. Useless. Never do it. It's a waste of a slide because everybody knows exactly what you're going to do. <clears throat> this is essentially everything it's going to be. This is what you have to give in a talk. The introduction, what others have done. Yeah, you have to have that in there, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, objects. What was this? Spelling mistake was supposed to be objectives, right? But notice it's still a proper word. So would 
PowerPoint have ever caught that for me? No, so it never would have caught that. So this is again, I meant to ask you guys before I got this one. So spelling error there. What I intend to do, methods, how I did it, what I found, and discussion, what it means relative to these two. So this is the idea of what you're trying to get, <clears throat> okay? But you don't need to have this slide in here and say, I'm going to tell you what my introduction was, how I did it, and stuff like that. But this are, these are what the general outline for your talk should be. You have to have the introduction, but you don't have to tell everybody you're doing it. One of the last slides you're going to want for your introduction is the objectives. Okay, the objectives. What is the goal of your research? Typically, um, <clears throat> if you phrase it in a hypothesis testing format, what's a hypothesis? An if-then statement. If-then statement? Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. So, hypothesis, we would like something that it always is. Sure, okay, it's a prediction. It's what you might expect to have come about. Um, <clears throat> if we want to test our hypothesis scientifically, do we try to prove it or disprove it? Do we develop, develop, develop our study to try and prove or disprove or support or reject? Disprove. We try to disprove. Why? So you don't skew your results. Yeah, because you might inadvertently design something and end up skewing your results a little bit. So if we want to try and disprove the hypothesis, reject the hypothesis, what type of hypothesis should we have for our last little bit of the objective? What do we call that type of a hypothesis? No. 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 That was no. certainty. <laughs> yes. How about a null? A null hypothesis. Yes. It's a null hypothesis. What? Would anybody like to tell us what a null hypothesis is? Yeah. I like to think of it as like business as usual. Like okay, all right, all right. Come on, guys, a little more specific. I like you're just trying to something instead of something. No, and then, <clears throat> not necessarily. No, what does it make you think of? Nothing's changed. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Null. Null and void. Zero. Not a zilp zish. So a null hypothesis is always going to be one of no difference, no, no correlation, fact, yeah. no relationship. Okay? Because usually you guys are trying to show that there are relationships between things, right? Usually in ecology we're trying to show that there's a relationship between A and B, A influences B or whatnot. If we can disprove that there is not a relationship, if we disprove that there's not a relationship, by default that must mean that there is a relationship. Yeah. So <clears throat> one of the things you can try and do to make things really simple for the people listening to your talk is in your objective, your last slide there, throw up null hypotheses. Okay? <clears throat> it's unequivocal what you're trying to test then. A simple null hypothesis. There is no relationship between um, <clears throat> autumn olive size and soil nitrogen. Okay? If you disprove that, what does that require? If I disprove that there is no relationship between autumn olive height and soil nitrogen, what must that must mean? There is a relationship. There is a relationship. Simple declarative things. Easy to see. <clears throat> Giving a talk is an important method for conveying your information to other scientists because what you have to say is very important and earth shattering. Everyone should be very excited about your work, so you need to make sure that you convey all the information that has ever been learned about your subject and how smart you are so that everyone will trust you implicitly. Such as important things like how many angels does it dan can angels can dance on the head of a pin, or if a tree falls in the forest and nobody around does make sound, or what is sound with one hand clapping, or most interestingly, what came first, the chicken or egg? Well, the ultimate example is not really a very good one because we already know that the answer to that one doesn't, don't we? Now, in dramatic contrast, the penultimate question is obviously a much more interesting philosophical question, although when one actually knows the definition of the word clapping, it readily becomes an antimony because clapping is defined in Webster's Dictionary as bringing one hands together to make a sound, which self-evidently concludes the eventuality of clapping with only one hand. Similarly, a simple basic <coughs> bare-bones background in physics elucidates the obvious implication that anything traversing great distances com complied by the gravity laws of gravitational attraction Requisitely will have some of its kinetic energy transmorphed into sound waves, which by definition indicates that the sound is a byproduct of the after effect of the large piece of secondary xylem plummeting to their surface. So what's wrong with that? There's too much writing on the slide. Okay, wonderful. Yes, there is way too much writing. What else? It's not an introduction, really. Well, <clears throat> this, is, this is an introduction about what we're trying to do here, right? 
Like so this is this is way. no. I mean for well, no, no. I mean what? for like it's it is. It's way too much. There are yeah. typos. Typos. Good. There's multiple typos in here. So it's an introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Really <clears throat> yeah. You often don't see as many citations in a <clears throat> um, in a yeah in a presentation as you would for a full paper. Oh, so. no, I didn't. Oh. I said you're not really stating like anything. You're just kind of going from one to the next to the next. And it's just like... <laughs> yeah, okay. Sure, yeah. There are some run-ons. There's some run-on sentences, yes. So, way too much word. And what else, though, what did I do? You looked right at the screen. I looked right at the screen, and more importantly, I just looked right at the screen. Suppose instead I was staring here, though, standing here and had done the same thing. How many of you guys can read? Surprisingly few of you. Who can read? <laughs> One person in the back can't read. All right, well, you're excused. So <clears throat> You guys can all read, right? If it's written up here, do I need to read it to you? No. No. What's going to happen as soon as this slide pops up? What did every single one of you guys start doing? Reading. reading it. So if it's just up there and I'm just reading it off of what's up here, pointless. No need to do it. <clears throat> way too much word, way too many words as well. Um, <clears throat> anything else about the words that are used up here? There are a bunch of different topics that don't really relate. Well, they really do relate. all relate. There are, there are a bunch of philosophical questions. Yeah. How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Tree falls in the forest, nobody runs and makes sound. What's the sound of one hand clapping? Those are all philosophical things which people think about. So, so but... <clears throat> Okay, um, antinomy, what does it mean? Yes, what is antinomy? Yeah, I was going to just say that there's a lot of technical jargon on there that most people probably wouldn't recognize. Actually, there's very little technical jargon. Technical jargon would be very specific for what you are looking at, okay? There's a lot of words in here, though, that most people won't know. Does anybody know what antinomy means? All right, what about transmogrify? I heard Calvin and Hobbes, I think. <laughs> yes, that's right. Magus, that is where it comes from. How can you know Calvin and Hobbes and not know Star Trek? <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes is just better. Oh! <laughs> well, we know who is not winning the competition no matter what. So, don't use words, never, ever use your thesaurus in Microsoft Word. Okay? If you have a real thesaurus, and you know how to really use a thesaurus, that's okay, but the source, just because they say there are synonyms, does not mean there are synonyms in all cases, okay? Don't use words, don't try and make your presentation sound more erudite than it is. And I'll leave you guys to figure out what that one means. So, um, <clears throat> but use, use words which you normally would use, okay? Use words which you would normally use. Don't try and make yourself sound... Um, <clears throat> Don't try to make yourself sound mm, more worldly than you are, okay? One of the things I teach a lot of honors students, and that's one of the very first things they try to do, is they try and throw in all these big words because they think it's making them sound smarter. It doesn't work. Most of the time, they use them wrong. So, try to avoid that. <clears throat> no, we never need lots and lots and lots of words. Um, what are the words on that slide really for? Are they for the audience or are they for you? No. They're for you. Do you want the audience reading your slide or do you want them listening to what you're saying? Where is the majority of the information coming from? What's on the slide or what you're speaking? You want them to listen to you. Okay? <clears throat> the words on here, I tell my students, I don't ever want to see a complete sentence on your presentation. I don't ever even want to set this up there because it's that's the whole point. That's the whole fact. If it's on there, they don't need you. You're up here when you've got tables and you've got figures and stuff like that. The words that are up there are really to cue you back in on to make sure that you don't forget what you wanted to say. There are words which will help them understand as well, but we don't need to have complete sentences explaining anything else that we might have. The th <clears throat> the words on a slide typically are for you. So, these were just some of the typo, typing mistakes that were on there and stuff like that, so not a big deal. But there were a bunch of things. 
Again, one of the things which I've done is I went through and I put in words that are misspellings as they're used, but they're still spelled properly for other things. That is one of the hardest things to do. Um, so, and it's hard to proofread your own work. Okay, it's hard to proofread your own work. You want to make sure that you guys. <clears throat> there's so many of you here. Make sure everybody, when you have to, when you're about to give your presentation, before you do it, several days beforehand, because you guys will all be done early. You guys are all stellar students and are always on the ball. Make sure somebody else reads through your slides. Somebody not associated with your project. You guys are all working in pairs. Can't be the other person from the project. It's got to be a different team. Because they're not going to be as in tune with it. You guys know exactly what you want to say, and regardless of what you wrote, your brain is going to say that that's the word that's there. It's just going to pass right over it, and you're going to just think that that's what it says, regardless of what it actually says. If you're cool, and you have a Mac, you can actually have it read it to you. And then it would read all of the exact words as you have it. So it will catch you with a lot of spelling errors like that as well. But definitely, do not <clears throat> try to proofread your own work if you can avoid it. Anything annoying yet? Yes! That was cool. Oh, painful! Very psychedelic. Yeah. Painful! <laughs> so far, every slide has transitioned with a different style. Okay? You don't need to do that. It doesn't make it look any better. It's just, yes, annoying. So, <clears throat> if you really like one, stick with it. Try not to make it obnoxious where it's a lot of things, though. Simple is better. You're standing there presenting to a bunch of scientists, okay? They're going to want to try and make things as simple as possible. Okay. What's wrong here? Some spelling mistakes. Okay. The graph isn't labeled on the side, like one, like what are the numbers? This number is not labeled? No, yeah, I mean, like, that'd be what? That axis is good. My axis is good, yes. Okay, good. My axis, I knew where you were going. I was just being a jerk about it. So, yes, my axis is not labeled. My axis is not labeled. That's bad, yes. Always make sure you label your axes. They have to have a label of some type. Anything else? Graph doesn't label. No title. Sure it is. It's not descriptive. It doesn't tell you anything. Ah, uh, okay. So, <clears throat> do I even need a label up here? What's this for? Shouldn't whatever title you have up here be referencing what you're going to be representing here? Not necessarily. I think really? in, pretty much unless you're having, there are some people who might put in stacked graphs where maybe it's Yeah, one it depends on top. if you've got multiple graphs on a slide and yeah. stuff. But if it's just one, probably this should be telling you, because this should be the main point of the slide, right? And then since you're presenting one graph, that's probably going to be what that main slide is about. If you've got a lot of graphs, yeah, sure, absolutely, put some type of a header on it. Um, <clears throat> what else? I have to say, 3D graphs are like my. You don't get to pet answer. Team. I'm just saying. Like, I don't no, care. You don't get personally. to answer anymore, Sarah. We don't like 3D graphs. <clears throat> That's yeah. right. <laughs> They're doomsday. 3D graphs for are pointless. <clears throat> if you have. Three-dimensional data, 3D graphs are fine. If you don't have three-dimensional graphs, it just makes it much harder to actually figure out what the values are actually representing. So, 3D graphs means you must have how many axes? Good, you better have an X, a Y, and a Z, so you better have data that requires an X, a Y, and a Z. How many axes do I actually have here? Two. So what dimensionality should my graph be? Two. Two. Yes, thank you. What else? <clears throat> the green isn't labeled. It's just series one. Fabulous, right. Do I need to label this? Do I need this legend here? Yeah, you should. Why? What is it going to be labeled? If I had more than one color, but do I have more than one color? No. No. So do I need a legend here? I guess so. No, because it's always going to be 
referring to whatever that is. Yeah. So, <laughs> which we don't know, but we do know it's not series one as well, right? That doesn't help us any more than leaving it blank. So yeah. So if you don't have multiple colors on there, you don't need this. It's gonna. It actually makes your graph smaller. Think about it. If I didn't have this, my graph could be extending all the way out to here. So the bigger graphs are going to make it easier to read. Anything else? Um, the description on the side already talks about <coughs> good presentation. So underneath the graph, you can just put good and bad instead of having Sure, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Sure. Yeah. And consistency. Right? Mm -hmm. Try to be consistent in your use of however you're doing capitalizations. So wonderful. Good. All right. Mm -hmm. Again, when you're up here, when, when you're doing a presentation, it's often more of an outline format, so you don't necessarily need, you know, these are more of a bulleted point thing than an actual list or something like that. That's what you're talking about. What do you mean when after presentation? That's what yeah. you're talking about. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's, this, is, this is not a list necessarily, right? It's a bulleted point. You can, but you don't have to. So what else, though? What about it? Mixing tenses. <clears throat> Good. Okay. I guess so. Maybe not. I don't know. And the capitalization, like you capitalize desk and chair, but not search and then. Good. And stupendous intellect. <laughs> Anything else? Materials and methods? Or does that not matter? It could, yeah. Usually, if you're going to only use one material. Right, so that would probably be better. Do you ever really need a list of materials? How many of you guys have written a scientific paper and provided a list of materials? Okay, so we don't ever really need a list of materials, period, right? Because <clears throat> when you're talking about what you did, probably all of that should become self-evident, right? Mm -hmm. And... <clears throat> Does it matter if I use the desk and a chair? No. It doesn't matter if I was standing at a stool and an ice cream stand table, right? Think about what you're putting in here and how much of it is really relevant. When you're doing a presentation, <clears throat> what parts do you guys find the most boring parts when you guys see a presentation? I know what I find the most boring. I know for me it's the stats, but like, yeah, right. I hate the gonna say. <laughs> I, I despise the methods. I am going to trust. I want a generality of what you guys did, right? I need to know that, you, okay, okay, you guys really didn't screw anything up horribly. But think about the level of what <clears throat> you're trying to convey, okay? You're already talking to a group of scientists, right? Typically, if you're giving a presentation, it's going to be to a group of other scientists. So you don't have to have a huge amount of information that's plastered into it, okay? <clears throat> I would much rather hear a, some bits about the background. I want, I want to make sure I understand why the study was important and relevant. I want a clear understanding of what you found, the results, okay? I want to understand those results. <clears throat> and then I want to know what they mean. This part to me is if you have to cut someplace, okay? If you have to cut someplace, the method section can often be one of the good places to try and reduce the amount of material you're covering. Because if you're going to talk to the American Society of Mammalogy, <clears throat> they understand Sherman traps and all these other different types of things that you would be using. They are going to understand, okay, we did a 10 by 10 grid. You don't have to go into details about how you measured it, anything like that. So think about the level of what you end up needing when you're presenting these things, okay? <clears throat> and especially in presentations, people tend to reduce the amount of materials and methods sections that they would be using relative to everything else. And you never, really, really never need that. <clears throat> what about this? What's, how much of this is needed? How much is not needed? Which one of these bullet points are needed? 
which ones are not. <coughs> First one. Needed or not? Not needed. Not needed. Okay. Good. Absolutely not. The last one is needed. Last one is needed? Mm -hmm. Why? Statistical analysis, you would have to elaborate which test you did, depending on what that is. Sure, and when I show the results, I'm going to have to show it as T equals subscript degrees of freedom equals 2, T equals 3.76, semicolon, P equals 0 0.003. Is there any doubt about which statistical test I used? Nope, probably not. So, I mean, it can be, and this is where I'm getting into the idea. It has to be in there somewhere, right? <clears throat> And it can be, but it doesn't necessarily have to be here. If you're using complicated statistics and stuff like that, yeah, you probably do want it in here. But if they're simple things, we can probably get away with it. Or I was even going to say you could take the last one and come up with the one ahead of it. Like I, I then use a t-test to determine which I was going Yeah, so we, got, we have, probably don't really need, if I'm doing a more complex one, then yeah. Okay. But yeah, absolutely, okay. Do I need this one? No, everybody's going to assume that you tallied, you counted, you did all of this stuff. What about this one? Because you see it on the figure. On the well, graph, that, but that's my own interpretation on the graph, right? This is how I generated my data, right? This one out of everything up here, this one would be a key. If you do a review paper, you must tell the people who are reading it what the terms were that you searched for. Because I could have said, ah, if my shorthand is I'm going to call them good presentation and bad presentation. That's my own interpretation of it, right? But by doing this, <clears throat> this is the one piece out of all of these that you must know in order to have any idea how I actually did the whole thing, right? That's the one piece that really does become relevant to what we end up seeing. So this is a set. How it would have looked. So it comes in. <clears throat> Notice what am I doing? What am I using? Like how you can time it. Yeah. Is. Now I don't ever use timers. I'm actually hand clicking in. Right. Okay. So now you can do this in two different ways. Okay. It, I'm animating my slides. Right. Why did I animate instead of having all this pop up all at once? Pictures could be larger. Pictures could be larger, but if you check the size, my font size never changes, and my pictures never cross over the line where the text is, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not actually allowing me to have increased size of my pictures. My pictures can correspond to the different bullet points. Sure, <clears throat> but if I had all of them up there at once and I just cycled through my pictures, couldn't I do the same thing? Why animate it? I was, I was going to say I don't like it when people animate their slides because like, if they forget how many times they have to click it and they accidentally go to the next slide and they go back, I, don't know. I think it's just a little funny. So you should practice it enough that that never yeah. happens. <laughs> so um, why I usually encourage it then, though, oh. and, I actually, and it's for exactly kind of a lot of things you guys were saying, but to tie it together is I want them to only think about this. And when they think about that, I have a picture for that one. If all this pops up at first, and I'm up here yammering, what are you going to start doing? Are you going to listen to me, or are you going to start reading straight down that list? Reading. Yes, you're going to start reading straight down the list, and you are going to get to this point before I'm ready for you to get to that point. By having them come up one at a time, I force my audience to stay with me. Okay? I'm forcing them to stay where I want them to be at as well. <clears throat> What do you guys think? Wording lines. Good, bad, too much, too little, just right. It's Goldilocks. Mama bear, papa bear, baby bear. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. This was one that my student did. This is one of my grad students. This was her exact slide. So, do we need all of that info on there? Maybe not the last one. How about this? Oops. 
Does that give you all the same information? All the information you need? How did I catch my turtles? Because remember, I'm up here talking about it too as well, right? So I'm going to come up and I'm going to say, we went out and we caught a bunch of turtles by hand while we were kayaking down the river. From each one of the turtles, I ended up taking three scale clips for DNA analysis. Now, our sampling site spread across two drainage basins and included three different watersheds, and we amplified nine microsatellite loci. Remember, you guys are up here talking the whole time you're telling them these things. That's why this really is about me. This is about you guys when you're given the presentation to make sure that you don't forget a part of it rather than for what the audience is going to get. The audience is still getting a lot, right? How did I catch my turtles? Even if I forgot to say it, do you know? I caught them by hand. Did I have turtle traps out? Did I have turtle traps out? Nets. Don't say nets in the first. Well, I used nets, hand nets, right? So is that a turtle trap? No. <clears throat> How many different places did I sample? If I forgot to tell you, could you still figure it out from what's written up here? Yeah, so think about it. Think about it. <clears throat> you usually want the least amount of information you can get up here, okay? So that it still makes sense, so that people, your audience can still understand what's going on. But really, you want them focused on you. When you, are, when you guys are in class, do your professors want you just blindly scribbling down what might be on the PowerPoint? Or do they want you to be listening to them and taking the notes from what they are saying? What, does your, what do your professors expect? Yeah, because they, they're going to be talking about more than just what is up on that slide, right? It's the same time you're at seminars. Whenever you're getting, giving a presentation, you are going to be giving a whole lot more information than <clears throat> what is on that slide. Okay, so I'm, now I'm into my objectives. What's wrong here? So you should never start a slide without having something actually on there. Right? There's nothing here other than the, my title slide. You guys can get an idea, okay, this is going to probably be about red-backed <coughs> salamanders, but, and it's going to be my objectives, but you're starting out with a blank slide. And then we'd be oh, going through and talking, and we'd get those guys. <clears throat> What's wrong up here? What do you think was, we could improve here? Wonderful. Text is way small considering how much area I still have, right? <clears throat> Fill your blank space. White space doesn't help anybody. Okay? So yes, absolutely. Make your fonts as large as you can. <clears throat> Even though you're projecting it and you might be projecting it onto a really big screen, it doesn't always help. Okay, what else? What else might be easier? To, might it be easier? Because remember, one of the things that you guys need to do when you're doing a presentation and when you're writing your um, papers is your job is to make it as easy as possible for either the reader, if it's the paper you're writing, or your listeners, if you're at a presentation. How could I improve this? No. Does what does GG stand for? Genetic diversity. Okay. Why did I need why does it need to be abbreviated there? Any reason? What does it tell I me? Mean, if I'm in the audience and I see that, it tell, tells me something immediately. What does it tell me? The presenter is lazy. Exactly. <laughs> that was then I was gonna use that exact word. Thank you. The presenter is lazy. Why? They don't want to spell out genetic diversity. They don't want to spell out genetic diversity. Am I crunched for space anywhere on this freaking slide? No. Does it make you have to do one more step as the audience? Yes. Don't use abbreviations. <clears throat> Rarely, if ever, do you need to use abbreviations. Now, that doesn't mean don't use M for meters, right? Don't use micro L for microliters. <clears throat> Those are standardized abbreviations that everybody understands, okay? But if you're defining something yourself, if you're making these abbreviations, just don't. 
okay? <clears throat> um, greater than, equal, less than, equal signs, it's up to you guys. Some people like them, some don't. But <clears throat> um, <clears throat> if you're trying to make specific projections or predictions, sometimes some people like it, other, people's, other times people don't. But you rarely, rarely are ever limited for space. Don't use abbreviations. It just makes it harder for your audience. Could you have gotten away with not using the first bullet to... Yes! Oh, gosh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how you want to think of it. Um, <clears throat> it depends on what you're doing with the talk, right? It depends on what really is your um, overarching goal. What I would actually say is I would... I, I just... I don't like these words. I don't like having the word introduction on my, on my presentations, methods, results, discussions, objectives. I'd rather have something up here that's phrasing that. So yeah, so you could definitely get away without that. <clears throat> but that's going to be kind of, that one's more up to you. That one's not a big deal. <clears throat> so now, same exact stuff. Notice now, what's the difference though? What have I just been telling you guys? to do every time you see a slide. So this is the same stuff again. <clears throat> and I've been always telling you, cut, 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 right? Make it as small as possible. This, so let's see. What do you think is better? So we'll go back for a minute. This one, what type of a slide for your objectives when you're trying to present the objectives to your audience is going to be better? This one or this one? Which would you, being in the audience, would you rather see? Second one. <clears throat> yeah. So your objectives actually is one place where you might want to ignore the rule that less is often better. Okay? Because you don't want your audience to be confused about what your actual objectives are and what you might actually be testing. How many of you guys, when you're in a class, are so enraptured by what your professor is saying, you never drift out. Good, all right, nobody did raise their hand. This was the time you know shouldn't have, because I knew you would be lying. So, <clears throat> you guys are going to be at presentations, giving them, listening to them, everything else. Um, <clears throat> and you're going to drift. Presentations are a whopping, they, at national conferences, usually they're 12 minutes long with three minutes for questions and answers. People tend to drone on, speeding up question and answer time, but it's 15 minutes maximum, and our minds still wander in those 15 minutes. They can wander on almost anything, and you can catch yourself back up. This is crucial, okay? You want them to know what's going on. So I always encourage my students to have more information and maybe use complete sentences here. Because if they missed something that you were talking about because they were thinking about what they had for lunch, you'd rather than be able to go back and actually catch up and know exactly what those objectives were. So you want, this can be the one case where more actually is more. Okay. <coughs> what do we think about this slide? this one labeled, and I have a label here. So I corrected everything that you guys were complaining about the earlier. Capitalization isn't consistent on the bottom axis of the Yeah, all right, so I did miss that out. <laughs> Go on. But I got this, this, and this that you guys wanted. But it's still 3D. You don't need okay, it's still 3D, wonderful. It's still only one color. It's still only one color, so I still didn't need this, right? Descriptions are long. Descriptions are long, yeah. Do I need, and um, tell me, what about this one? And this one, and this one. Mm -hmm. These three are basically completely identical. identical. They're redundant, right? Mm -hmm. So think about that when you're doing it. <clears throat> I could have gotten away with just this, mm -hmm. since again, I only do have one image, one, one graph on this one. Mm -hmm. I don't need this at all. I could leave this one up here. That's fine. It still tells me essentially the same thing. Um, <clears throat> 
And if I did get rid of this and make it 2D, it'd actually be full size and would make a little bit more sense relative to that. Okay. All right, good. Um, let's see. Anything wrong with it? Pardon? More pixels. It's pixelated, yeah. <clears throat> now, it's not as big of an issue as it used to be. But people would always go onto the internet, grab pictures, they'd grab the little thumbnails of them, put them on the screen, on their PowerPoint, and then they'd just drag them to make them big and they would pixelate. <clears throat> Please make sure your images aren't pixelated, right? <clears throat> There's enough things on the internet, you can find a big full size one. So, <clears throat> try to do that. <clears throat> okay. What's wrong, guys? Our back table. You guys have to tell me what's wrong with this. You guys haven't said a word yet, so. Our back table is up. It's irrelevant. Yes. Well, you, I'm doing a, a presentation on presentations, right? So, so there's something wrong with every slide, right? So what's wrong with this slide? So nothing is, no, it's not that it's irrelevant, but there's, there's something that's missing. Any kind of words. You got your title, but you don't have any kind of descriptive yeah. information as to why. Okay, so I could have put here, kittens are horrible little beasts. Because remember, I'm talking, I'm going to be saying, kittens are horrible little beasts because they jump on each other, claw each other's eyes out, they rip their ears to pieces, they eat each other's food, they don't let themselves sleep, they push things off the countertops. I don't need to have all that written up because I'm talking now. But you should list it as bullet points in case no, someone don't necessarily need to. That's need why to. you want. That's why you want to listen to me. So there's something special about pictures. I'll give you a hint. How many of you guys think I took this? So, do you guys think I took the picture? So what's missing? Credit. credit. Yes, you must have credit for. Images. <clears throat> you don't have to know necessarily who it was, but this was the website where I grabbed it. Now, <clears throat> in academics and especially in presentations, we have a little bit of flexibility. Okay, there's something called academic fair use. Academic fair use allows you to use images in presentations and educational ventures without getting permissions from whoever holds that copyright, provided it's not used in a way that's actually distributed to individuals, or it's, can, or it's restricted to only being distributed to the individuals in that class. If <clears throat> I were to try and sell this presentation, I would have to get permissions from this company, find out who owns this image, and I would have to buy the use of that image. Going through and doing it in a presentation, you guys are going to see it, it's being used once, right? And then it's going to disappear. None of you guys are walking out with it. It's not being sold or anything else. So you don't need to get what's called permissions for this. But you should always give credit. If there's no credit under there, the implication is it's your work. And that's called what? Plagiarism. Plagiarism. That's right. You guys take a picture. You use it. You don't cite the source. It means it was yours. It's not yours. It's plagiarism. Okay? So... Don't do that. Always try and throw those things in. <clears throat> What's wrong here? Miss Sepplings. Yeah, Miss Sepplings is, she was a very nice teacher I had in third grade. <laughs> but doesn't help you, help, doesn't make much sense here. The words in the axis um, blend in with the title. I got a huge problem here, right? Okay, so my title is way too long. You guys can change this, right? You can actually get word wrap, everything else, so that it fits. Think about that. <clears throat> um, anything else? Numbers are too tiny. Numbers are too tiny, and they're, they're too close together, right? I don't need to have all of those in there. Much cleaner, much clearer. Not 3D. Notice we're counting by twos. We're going to take a quick quiz. What number is right here? Seven. Yes, you don't need to have every number in there to understand. Even if this went, you know, 0, 10, 20, 30, you guys can all 
do that estimation between. So think about that. And think about keeping these as precise as you possibly can. Okay? <clears throat> How many of you guys have ever seen a presentation where somebody puts up a slide like this, and the very next thing is they say, well, I know you can't read it, so don't worry about that. If you yeah. put that up and you say that, why would you bother putting it up? Is there any point? Now, <clears throat> there, there is one thing that you might want to think about. If, if you were presenting this type of a graph, what might you think would be a reason that it might be reasonable to try and put something up this so that's that tiny? What would be the only thing you could get out of seeing a slide like this that would actually be make sense for me to put this up and I'm gonna and I'm talking about it, yada 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 that I want you guys to notice. What would be the one pattern you can notice? Maybe you were talking about one of the things on the very right so you want to give some big big picture. So it could be that I wanted to focus on one of these things on the very right. I would say that would still be really bad because this is the one that I'm interested in. What am I interested in? Well, it's this one. You, 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 you did raise your hand and said you could read. A little disappointed, I gotta tell you. So even trying to find one thing in that whole thing really makes it hard. But suppose I said, what I want you guys to pay attention to is that this is all blue and this is all green well I guess maybe that's purple, I have trouble, purple, green, blue, yellow, red if you want to just show the really big picture here that can be okay if I am wanting to go down to just one little thing you can't see anything, right? you can't tell anything but if I want to try and look at the bigger picture aspect that, oh look there's a dichotomy between these two guys. This tact, this this uh, clay is sister to this clay. That level, you're probably okay. Otherwise, try not to make things that are so big that people can't make sense for what they actually end up seeing them with. <clears throat> yes. Can't read it. You can't read it. It's pixelated. <clears throat> Suppose it wasn't pixelated. Even then you still couldn't read it again, right? Yeah. So when you've got things like this, if you've got a large table that you have to show, it's never going to work. Okay? Um, if instead I wanted to try and <clears throat> do something that I wanted to have representative here and see some type of a pattern, instead of trying to put everything in together, you can try and color code, do something like that. Make it easy for your audience to understand what you're trying to highlight. So if I wanted to say that, you know, <clears throat> all of these things are EW, so the uh, program, the specific programmatic committee for this is all the EW committee. Then I could say, okay, everybody in red is going to strictly be EW. And then you can put up a little code here, and it can make a little bit more sense. But if you need huge tables, you've got to find a way so that the audience can understand what's going on with them without them having to read anything. Okay. <clears throat> so this was uh, another slide from one of my grad students talking about turtles. And so she has... What do you think? So this was the wording. What do you think of the wording? And that was how it plays through. So she started up here. So we went to here. And then here. What do you guys think? What's refugia? Or a refugia is a place where organisms survived um, during the, the for, from whatever type of catastrophe it might have been. So they often will call these glacial refugia. And she had talked about that already and everything. Um, <clears throat> so where's North Carolina on the map, though? She kind of circled it. She did kind of circle it, right? But notice one of the things that she had was oh, this whole figure is up here all the time, right? She animated in different spots but she didn't animate in what was happening, right? So if she wanted to start out talking about during Ice Age refugia in North Carolina, 
this should have popped up. Should, she have, should we have seen any of these even? No. Then she talks about recolonizing Michigan from two routes. Southern population through Ohio, this one could have popped up. North population through Canada, that one could have popped up. So think about what you can do to try and make individuals <coughs> read them or uh, follow your progress a little bit better. Okay, again, <clears throat> doesn't matter so much what we're trying to show here. Do you guys notice something right away? Is there anything unique on the left versus the right? Different colored lizards. Different colored lizards, and <clears throat> this one is mostly purple. purple with one orange. The lizards here are mostly orange. with one purple. Orange. So, <clears throat> what she was trying to show was movement between these different populations. Um, just by doing this, she took a different color. She even highlighted it more to make sure that they tried to stand out a little bit more. If you're trying to get something across to people, you want to try and pull their eyes to it as easily as you can. And I don't have my laser pointer here, but what's one of the worst things you can do? Say you got a laser pointer in your hand. Sit there and go like this. And you get that laser light that's spinning and spinning and spinning and making everyone sick and want to vomit. Try to avoid that. There's other ways to get people's attention to it. If you're using a laser pointer, you want, don't typically want to be making huge circles, right? If, if there's one graph up there and you want them to pay attention to the graph, do you need to use a laser pointer? No. If I want to highlight this one animal, is it going to make it more sense for me to hold it and point at the animal or just be swirling around like this when I'm catching all the other ones? Try to hold it on the one animal that you, or the one specific point that you're trying to look at. <clears throat> now, there was another way that you can do this as well. And so I just want to see which one you guys think is better. So, Because this was a, we had a big debate in lab about what it was. <clears throat> so the idea was that here we have a blue population with one orange animal moving into it. Here we had an orange population with one blue animal moving into it. <clears throat> okay, and this was one way to show that. Mostly blue with one animal that dispersed in. Mostly orange with one animal that dispersed in. So <clears throat> this was another way that she came up with trying to do it. This is kind of the purple population, because it's got a purple boundary. This one is an orange population. It's got the orange boundary. We have an orange animal that moved through. And alternatively, she had a blue animal that moved through. Which one shows dispersal more readily, do you think? First. First one? First one? Fabulous. So <clears throat> you don't always need to make things fancy, right? Just having the pictures there with the one animal that was different, was able to use it. People love to make things more complex than they need to. They, need, they like to try and have things really fancy and use all the great things that PowerPoint or Prezi can do, whatever. But think about what you're actually doing. Most of the time, simple is best. So, <clears throat> let's see. What does this slide, what does that bottom part indicate? Not knowing anything, what does it suggest is happening? You guys, are all, you guys are all biologists, so right? Do we have any? No? Words with? Words or, or photos? Words. Words, okay. So we've got six biologists at least. What is that concept showing? Hybridization. Fabulous, right? <clears throat> and now this was actually where a little bit of animation helps a little bit, right? It showed you you had the two that went together and ended up being hybrid, and then she was just showing further hybridization. Okay. Um, so I want you guys, though, we want to get this done too. So that's, let me see if there's anything else that was really wanting to talk about. Just different ways to do animations. I don't think so. Oh yeah. So actually, so this is, this is a problem. <clears throat> when you guys give presentations, you're a Mac person, rarely will you ever be giving your presentation on a Mac. PCs used to love to mess with Mac presentations. And you would get things like this all the time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you've got to go whenever you're giving a presentation and <clears throat> Sarah is going to ask for these presentations several days ahead of time. What she's going to do is she's going to make sure that this doesn't happen. She's going to load them and make sure that things look properly. Anytime, even going from a PC to a different PC, you can have major issues because they might be running an older version of PowerPoint. They might have different defaults set up. So I went and I gave 
a talk at a national conference, and I had <clears throat> all my bullets on my computer looked absolutely normal. I can't remember what they were. They were squares or circles or something like that. But I plugged it in. I didn't have time. I didn't bother checking. Went, gave my presentation. All my bullet points were pink hearts. That was not the coolest thing that ever happened. So dig through and check your presentations on the computers you're going to actually be going on beforehand. Okay, that's good enough for this. So <clears throat> think about it. Simple is usually better. Fewer words is probably better. Um, you don't need lots of crazy animations for what you're trying to do. Easier for your audience. That's the number one thing. Whatever's going to make things easier for the audience is going to be what you want to do while making sure still that they aren't just reading everything that you're telling them. Okay? You want to have it be what you're going to, you want them listening to you instead. Okay, so now for the fun part. Everybody has to do some kind of a presentation. The nature was with words, fellows, you guys slightly different, but you guys can be thinking about it as a cover for a book, right? So everybody else, it's going to be a um, <clears throat> a, pre, a, a slide for the, cup, the, for the first slide, your title slide of the talk you're going to give, okay? And what we're going to do is we've got, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. We ended at 3.30? Thereabouts. I think we have one of you girls, I think, has to leave at 3. Yeah. yeah. So, I, my ride. My ride. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so are, are you guys are part of the same team? Yep. Fabulous. So. And I, I would say the nature and words, you guys do have to give a presentation, yeah. but yeah. It, sometimes there, there are different ways you can do it. There are some people who have ended up doing it as, like, an, they talk about their methods and do a little bit of a reading. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a little bit more... Flexible, yeah. I would say. But so everybody is eligible. Yes. It's it would be like what's the slide that you want up when you get walked up to be introduced for your nature with words presentation. For the researchers, it's what is the title slide that's going to be up there. And then we're all going to judge, and whoever has the best one, that group gets the gift certificate. So if you're by yourself, you get the whole thing yourself. So mm -hmm. you have some time. You've Here's got a presentation that. in what three weeks. It's like, uh, yeah, like three weeks. Three weeks from now. So let's make our title slides. One thing, and you guys did catch it right away, <clears throat> you guys said what was boring about mine was no picture. And I agree. The slides that most people do now for their title slides is a picture that fills the whole screen, right? That's relevant to your work. And then what's a cool title? Titles, <clears throat> I'll tell you, I like, I make my students try and have snappy titles. So it's usually a pun or something like that. So it's something, colon, thing before the colon. Colon is kind of the snappy fun part. The point after the colon is a little more descriptive than that. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So uh, I'll give you an example. One of my students was working on ring seal reading in the Arctic, so she titled her presentation Love on the Rocks, Breeding or Reproductive Strategies of Ring Seals in um, on the Alaskan Sheet Ice. So. So try and have some fun with it too. So have at it guys. At twenty after we'll